but y'all got some new stuff coming. Um, right. Or I guess it's been announced, right. The core, the core stuff. So, um, yeah, you want to talk to me about that just a a little bit, like a a brief overview, and then we'll get into some more specific questions. Yeah, for sure. So our, our company was founded out of a love and passion for, for travel, um, specifically expedition style travel and our founders, Lance and Michelle, they couldn't find a product on the market that suited their specific needs. Um, so with Lance being a four by four expert and um, their sense of, of adventure, um, there's nobody that says you have to be uncomfortable in the woods or in the wilderness. And so they didn't see any reason why they couldn't have all the creature comforts and home off grid. And so they designed and built the first earth cruiser um, on a cab over design and built the house and whatnot and had all the creature comforts of home. And all of a sudden, somebody's like, hey, where'd you, where'd you buy that thing? And they're like, oh, we built it. And then they ended up selling it. And then it uh, happened again. They're like, hey, light went on in their head. This might uh, fit a, a segment of the market that's, that's not being catered to yet. So all of us uh, within Earth Cruiser and our entire company, uh, we have an extreme passion for expedition and travel and um, just that search and thrill you get from travel and the product is a tool to help you do that. Um, So we've been building earth cruisers. They're established in 2008 in Australia, came over here in 2012, started building vehicles here in central Oregon in 2013 and 14. And uh, we were really one of the first companies specifically here in North America to build a recreational vehicle, uh, more sp- so an expedition vehicle on a cab over design. So we used to build on the Fuso FG chassis. As we all know, Mitsubishi pulled out of the North American market. Uh, we had plans in the portfolio to start uh, exploring gas and other manufacturers like Isuzu. Right. And so when that happened, our hand was kind of forced um, and not forced, but accelerated our plans to uh, work with Isuzu and specifically build on the NPR chassis with that 6.6 LS gas engine. And so the cab over platform has been the foundation for our our flagship models, the FX and the EXP. Uh, And so now with the uh, new product on the Isuzu NPR, we're like, hey, we could we could use this chassis for many other things other outside of recreation. So that is the foundation of our flagship models, the FX and the XP, but also we've explored the DIY segment, commercial government, um, rural search and rescue, uh, fire and wildland fire, it, it suits needs. So yeah, it's obviously a great chassis and platform to upfit for expedition travel but there's so many other uses for it that we're just beginning to tap. Uh, so it's really exciting. Um, the rec stuff is fantastic. That's who we are. That's our DNA. That's how we're founded, but we're able to use that foundation that we used for an expedition vehicle for other market segments to help out our community. I mean, we live in the Pacific Northwest. We're in historic droughts. We've had historic fires year over year. And so to think that we, we could build a product to potentially help, mitigate that sort of disaster in our own backyard that's really exciting stuff yeah shoot yeah man um you know i i intentionally intentionally kind of like you know i nosed around uh in the new course stuff a little bit but i i really wanted to hear from you guys on that um yeah and so you know with with the new azuzu chassis are is is the main idea i mean i assume you're going to be earth cruiser is going to be building you know fully fleshed out wreck vehicles and overland Absol- rigs absolutely yeah that's still a, a major part of our business and it's right. it's the foundation for our fx's and exp's today it's it's outfitted on a zuzu mpr chassis totally uh but you 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 are um earth cruiser is selling these kind of uh bear right uh, so yeah. if you wanted to build your own or, or like you were saying, if you're, you know, if you uh, a fire department wanted to buy a couple of them or whatever, the they're coming. Uh, I guess the idea is to just expand the platform 
to whatever Ex sort of off-roading needs to be done. You know? Exactly. We want to provide a different alternative to what has been standard in like utility business and uh, wildland fire rigs and mining. Like Quintus, I mean, just typically you'd use a Ram 5500 cab chassis or a Ford F550 cab chassis. And there's tremendous benefits to those chassis. They're great vehicles. We just have a different spin on it, right? With the cab over, there's certain safety features in terms of visibility going down the trail, or if you're in your a higher uh, harsh environment, just getting to uh, utility access up to uh, different cell towers and stuff like that. It's a different tool for a, a pretty much a different application. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to be a more hardcore remote style job that will that our vehicle will be the benefit for it will be a more uh, specific tool to be utilized in that situation. Right. Well, it, you brought up the, um, you know, like the, the Ram and Ford HD, you know, 550 stuff. Yeah. Um, it, it, it size comparison wise, um, you know, cause that's, yeah. that's obviously a big thing with, with a lot of the, the previous model earth cruisers is these things are big, you know, these are, these are yeah. big machines. How yeah. does the how does the new Isuzu uh, chassis kind of uh, compare? You know, to yeah, the it's a great truck? that's a great question. So these vehicles they look massive, right? They're on thirty seven inch tires and our proprietary suspension and upfitted four wheel drive system, so they look massive. But the physical foot the actual footprint of these vehicles are relatively small. So length and width of of this chassis is about a mid sized truck. A, toy, a Toyota Tacoma or a Colorado or a Ranger. And so that's the benefit of that cab over chassis is it's a relatively small footprint in terms of its length and width. I mean, you can do a U-turn on a two, uh, a two lane road, whereas those larger trucks, you're doing a Y-turn and it's, it just gets so much tighter on trail or off piste. Right. Um, you can take even our Earth Cruiser, our rec vehicle, an FX or EXP, and it fits in a parking spot at a grocery store. Don't get me wrong, like you're gonna attract a lot of people. It's a large vehicle, but right. the, the footprint itself, the dimensions, length and width are relatively small. I drive an F-150 day to day, day to day as my daily driver, and it's longer than our Isuzu MPR, than our yeah. core chassis. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, yeah, I grew up, I grew up driving Wranglers off road, you know, that was my thing. Yeah. So like I've always been on the, um, on that side of camp, you know, I like the smaller, more nimble off road stuff. And so I've always had a big crush on earth cruiser, but I've always been really intimidated by how huge, you know, the, the older, Ab you know, the, absolutely, the older, the, you know, the different model. And so I was really excited to see, um, that this that you know this new one's gonna be nice and it just feels so much nimbler and, and nicer and, and smaller and I was really excited to see that. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely the whole purpose, right? Is to go further longer on our rec side of the business, and so that involves going off piece, getting down tight trailheads, and so you need a more agile vehicle. Like that's why Jeeps are so successful for overlanding, right? Like. That's why the Toyota Tacoma is so successful in overlanding. They're pretty uh, agile vehicles with tremendous capabilities. So our whole idea with core is like, okay, let's, we, we know what our rec business does. We know what that vehicle does in terms of its agility and footprint, but there's so many other uses that could benefit from this chassis where instead of a 19.5 massive truck, you put that in a smaller package on our core chassis where it's it's a 14.5 GVWR, but it's a little bit more agile. It's a little bit more capable when the trail gets tight or when you get in really remote and and uh, just diverse terrain. Right. Compared to, compared to a traditional uh, uh, vehicle used in those applications, a 19.5 truck. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Um you know, I, 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 along the same kind of line of thinking with it being a smaller package, um, do you think it's also, you know, one of, one of my first questions that I wanted to ask you guys, to ask you specifically now is, is the, obviously we're in a pre, pretty weird place with fuel prices. Yeah, um, for sure. For are, sure. Are, is this, uh, is the core package, do we think that that's going to be somewhat more fuel friendly, uh, 
or so, is I it mean, negligible? You know, it, it, it's honestly, it's negligible. Yeah. Uh, I mean, these are trucks at the end of the day, they're meant to work. They're, they're tools for what you're using them for. Um, we obviously understand the importance of the long-term viability of our company and the product portfolio, but for this specific product, um, we focused on the gasser for specific reasons, horsepower and capability in the, the, the proven um, just durability of that GM block has yep. been phenomenal. Uh, it's the 6.6 liter V8. Yeah. 6.6 right? liter, 350 horsepower. It's the LS engine. So this right. is a block that GM has built for a number of years. So it's proven in performance cars and heavy duty applications. So the new shiny stuff is, is always fantastic, but at the end of the day, we're not, we don't just build a vehicle. We have to support our customers. So our entire business is built around that customer support. So the education of what the product is and isn't, the education of how to use it, but then more importantly, the support staff you have behind that product, which we are experts in. So most of the parts on this vehicle are off the shelf. So if and when this vehicle uh, breaks, you have parts available or we can next day air them to you. We try not to use any very specific, um, just, uh, just one-off parts for these vehicles. We want you to be able to service these things. So that's a massive part of our business model. And yeah, fuel economy is obviously important. And we, we, we have plans in the portfolio for other products that will be more advantageous for that. But the benefits of gas right now in terms of the globe, EPA and fuel emission standards are getting harder and harder with diesel engines. Yeah. In my honest opinion, the million mile diesel engine is no longer exists if you were to buy a new diesel engine today. They're fantastic, they're great, but that million mile diesel just isn't the same anymore. Right. So specifically out here on the West Coast and where uh, just emission standards and environmental standards are hand, uh, heading, gas is a much cleaner um, a fuel source comparatively. So that's one part of it. But in terms of economy, it's pretty much negligible. At the end yeah. of the day, it's still a truck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I figure, you know, if we're talking, you know, still uh, many, many, many thousands of pounds of truck uh, that can mm -hmm. tow another many, many, many thousands of pounds, you know, I, I assumed yeah, uh, it would be negligible, you know, but if there's... Um, One of the things too, like the benefits of gas and it, it, it's, again, kind of neg negligible, as I said, but ultra low sulfur diesel is getting less and less available the world over where right. gasoline is becoming more and more readily available. So again, going back to what our core business is, yeah, we build a product, but it's servicing that product. So we, that's the trend. And we want to make sure we're, we're ahead of that trend and being a part of that. Right. Yeah. Um, that's, it's great. I mean, the, do you, does earth cruiser have plans? Uh, you know, obviously, Every OE, you know, every manufacturer, builder, every everyone is trying to race as hard as they can to come up with hybrid this and that and electric, sure. and that, which you know I think is is great. Um, sure. You know, but but in the um, you know I think in in kind of the tool world, which which I think you know it's fair to call Earth Cruiser, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, I I do. Where is it, where is Earth Cruiser on that on that thing? You know, are you, are you guys working actively on trying to? You ha you have to, right? I mean, we're core being a tool, um, our rec vehicles being a tool for global expedition tra travel. Um, if you're not focused on the future and where this world is headed, whether it be the business world or the recreation world or commercial world for vehicles, if if you're not planning for what it's going to be in the future, you're going to end up as the dinosaurs. Um, but our biggest thing again is, is we're always going to be service oriented and customer focused. So we're going to build and develop tools that are focused in that regard. Right. So absolutely. We're definitely planning for the future and what that's going to look like. And, uh, we're going to have some really exciting things with some really, um, uh, cool new products to market here sooner than later, because that's the way we have to go. That's the way the entire vehicle industry is going. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, make, that makes a lot of sense. Um, well, let me ask you this uh, on on a more, you know, on, on a fun and sort of personal note um, yeah. with with the kind of the DIY angle on the core mm -hmm. line. Um, that stuff is like is really interesting to me. I, I, I sure. love the kind of uniqueness of building your own camper. And yeah, uh, if, if you had to, um, you know, not not to put you two on the spot, but if you were going to build your your kind of ideal rig uh, with yeah. this chassis um you know you don't have to go into too much detail but what do you think what do you think you would do you've got one yeah. sitting there ready yeah to so it, it all depends on personal preference and use right so i've got a family i've got dogs uh my my wife and i and kids were avid outdoorsmen and we love being outside so my rig would focus on activities so um storage and water and energy systems being a premium like you want to get out there further away from people for longer periods of time. So yeah. my rig would definitely be a cab over design because of the agility and benefits of that, which we described in terms of its actual footprint length and width. Um, so I would focus something in terms of uh, storage and accommodating my toys. So mountain bikes, split boards, backcountry backpacking gear, stuff like that. Um, and there's a million great resources out there for people um, that are the experts in helping you do DIY, DIY rigs. Um, so that's how my rig would focus. Definitely sports oriented. Yeah, very cool. I love that. Uh, and, and so I was also wondering this. Uh, obviously, these are, you know, Earth Cruisers aren't cheap machines. You know, there's there's a yeah. lot going into these things. Um, for sure. And, you know, as someone who, uh, you know, your your position is is you're in the, you're the sales manager is that right sales manager correct yeah right so so uh, obviously you've got to spend time in these vehicles in order to sell them and to know the product how, how does that work for uh for your you know for employees how do you how do you interact with the product yeah absolutely so we're a relatively small company still we have just over forty employees our sales team is relatively small but again, part of being earth cruiser is the lifestyle, right? right. Um, we're all adventurers. We all like to get outdoors. We all have a sense of, of, of travel and a passion for travel. So it's absolutely essential that you, we get our employees and key stakeholders in our vehicles constantly. So um, just from a sales team's perspective, I'm upset with my team if they're not using our demo vehicles, right? You have to get in the vehicle and use it to know it and understand it. And that's one of the things that differentiates Earth Cruiser, honestly, is we developed this product and these products out of a void in the marketplace. Um, there wasn't a product there for the way we wanted to explore and travel. So we developed the product very specific to cater to that. So there is a, a, a reason for the rhyme in everything we do. Um, what I always encourage customers when they say, oh, why don't you add this, that, and whatever uh, idea they might have. So that's fine. We can absolutely accommodate that. But why don't you try using the vehicle for three to six months? And then if you still want us to change that, that then we'll do it. Live in the vehicle, use the vehicle as it's intended to be used, and then see if you'd like to change it. Because we've done that. That's how we develop our vehicles. It's living in these vehicles. It's doing months and months of expedition travel in these vehicles. It's doing extensive four by four off-road testing on these chassis. So um, it, everything we do and develop is based off of our experience as an overall company. And that's kind of our ethos and how we de design and develop our, our products. Right. Yeah. So y'all are spending a lot of time with, with the rig, uh, you know, you have to, yeah, you have to, uh, and, and central Oregon is just a fantastic place to do that. We're just at the base of the cascade. So we've got the cascades and everything that that has to offer. We have over 30 inland lakes within 30 minutes. Uh, so you we're in the high desert. So if you go East, we just have a ton of variable terrain and environments to test these vehicles, um, where most people don't have that diversity in geography this close. So we found that Bend is a perfect proving grounds for our product. Right. Well, that's, that's what I was also going to ask is, uh, in, in, as, as a sales manager, I have a feeling I, I probably know your answer to this question. Uh, 
and I and, and knowing the product, I have a feeling I know yeah. the answer to this question. Uh, but is the is there a like particular type of environment that Earth Cruiser feels, um, you know, that your products are particularly well suited? You know, like yeah, people have these things all over the world. You know, and there's a bazillion different types of, of environments to ride them. But is there For something sure. really that y'all have in the front of your minds is like, yo, this thing does this really well you know so again this is a generic answer but we go further for longer so if you want to truly get off grid and get remote for a sustained amount of time and be independent where you don't have to the the your your only setbacks are going to be your fuel source and your fresh water source and yourself your stamina Right. That's what these vehicles thrive in. And that's why they have been so successful the globe over. Um, I mean, we've shipped and sold these things all over the planet. Um, so they thrive rem in remote locations. As cheesy as that sounds, that's what they've been designed to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes sense. And, and uh, you know, that was, the, that was the answer I was expecting, you know, I mean, yeah. uh, but, it, but it makes yeah. sense. I mean, that is that's what the product is meant to do is personally for me, I like to get in, in the mountains. So I do a ton of, uh, back country split boarding. Um, they're four season, uh, wreck vehicles. So I like to get off piste and go into the Jefferson wilderness and right. into the cascades where you park at a snow park for weeks at a time or days at a time. Um, yeah that's where these things thrive but for yeah, me that's where i like it i think that's a really interesting point that like that i don't know that i've ever considered until now you know you just mentioned um kind of the individual you know the the driver the camper's own stamina being like yeah a factor um uh, which which i just have really never thought about um ha i mean have you I think Earth Cruiser is particularly well suited for this, like for this kind of thinking about the whole, like you know, obviously the van life thing. Van life, right? Right, has like gotten people, so popular, and is, people think it's glamorous and it's beautiful and it's freeing. Well, I tell you, if you haven't showered in a confined space or slept on a a roll out foam mattress or like, it's not. And so what is unique to Earth Cruiser is we have lived in these things for extended amounts of time. So when people ask us, well, why don't you put the bed here? Or why, why do you walk through your restroom at shower area? It's because every inch of space matters. And right. so we've lived it, right? So it, 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 you have to reframe your thinking where it's, it is your home on wheels. And we have customers that live full time in these vehicles but it's not your home as it would be your traditional home. You have right. to think differently because space is at such a premium. The materials that you use matter, especially if you're going off road, like in terms of your fasteners, the materials involved, all of that matters. Yeah. So what I always tell people when they ask like, oh, what are the limitations of the vehicle? It's, it's always you, number one, yeah. your personal stamina and what your comfort um levels are on and off road but then your water and your fuel yeah well you know i i it, it, it's a maybe it's just like a, a personality thing but you know i've always been like ah, oh, you know you don't need a camper to be that fancy to like go and do that thing but the you sure. know obviously the older you get uh or the older i've gotten the more i've realized yeah well, that's like not i mean that can be true and i think that is true for many sure. people uh but sure but the earth you want kind of style you want uh, it makes sense you know Absolutely. You want it more accessible, more. Our whole thing is that there's no reward for being uncomfortable in the right, right, world, right? Yeah. Like we want filtered drinking water. We want hot water. We, yeah. we want to be able to take a shower, um, yeah. stuff like that. We want to be able to use a toilet. Um, so does that matter to everyone? No, of course not. But uh, it's one of our things that differentiates our, our products and our customers where it's like, okay, you have a sense for exploration and adventure to go further and stay longer, but be comfortable while you do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think, uh, I think you're right on the money there. Uh, have you, have you, have you hit your wall before you and your family? Like, have you come to the point where you're like, it's, uh, it's time to get back to the house. Uh, Absolutely. So I've got a two and a half year old. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he's usually, he's usually, I wouldn't say our roadblock, but generally, 
uh, anywhere out there for five, six days, uh, yeah. he starts to be like, all right, I need some, uh, I need some, uh, cartoons and, yep, yep. uh, some Got modern it. conveniences of, of the, the modern world to yep. keep him at bay. But otherwise, um, yeah, just the, usually the things that hold us back as a family are just are me because I have to come back to the office and stuff like that in terms of work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, we, we, we can stay out there pretty long. Shoot. Yeah. Um, and then it, it, we'll, we'll, we're going to kind of wrap up here, but the, uh, one of the things that I think about a lot with, cause one of my favorite parts of just regular camping is cooking. Absolutely. Uh, does, does you like, you know, just you personally, you and your family have a, uh, have like a, a go to, you know, your earth cruiser meal, or do you just, we keep, you... we, we mix it up a lot. So I was a spoiled brat. My father was a chef growing up. Um, but he specialized in, uh, hand cut steaks and, uh, ribs. Uh, so it was a ribbon steakhouse. He was yeah. a res res restaurant owner. Um, but in terms of cooking in the vehicle, you have all the conveniences of your home kitchen. So it's just about prep, right? Um, bringing the proper ingredients and prepping your food and, and timing. So we, I get maybe we're a little bougie, but we cook in the earth cruiser just like we would at yeah. home. Um, and so it's just about bringing those ingredients or harvesting those ingredients when you're in the wilderness to utilize them. So whether it's mushrooms or fish or game or anything, you can right. do that because it's a modern kitchen by all yeah. intents and perfect purposes. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it's fantastic. Um, well, uh, yeah, I said we're, we're coming just about to the end here, but, um, tell me anything else I need to know about, about the, the core, um, when, you know, yeah. got, uh, I know they you know, the announcement was fairly recently, um, yeah. when are we expecting delivery or at least, or, or maybe first orders coming. Yeah. Out? So we're, we've already been building and delivering these vehicles that they, they've been tried. They've been tested, field tested, endurance tested. Uh, we've delivered six vehicles to the state of Oregon here for as high water rescue vehicles. Uh, we've delivered a number of, uh, of wreck vehicles for DIY builders. So the vehicle is already out there uh, right. in, in the wild, so to speak, being yeah. used. And we have this it's definitely not easy for us to build. There's a ton of engineering and, and, and prototyping and research and development that went into the development of this platform, but we can turn a vehicle around pretty quick. I have, we have build slots available early fall just for the core chassis because we're just stripping that Isuzu MPR and then upfitting it with our proprietary system. Right. Uh, whereas our rec vehicles that requires building the house and energy systems and plumbing and all of that. So in terms of just chassis availability, we can pump those out pretty quickly. Um, so it's out there, it's available. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's very exciting. Uh, I, I've been looking forward to this like type of chassis coming from Earth Cruiser for a long time. So yeah, uh, we're pumped yeah. about it. We got to get you out here to Central Oregon and we got to go for a test ride and show you our facility. Boy, you ain't got to tell me twice. I'll be out there. You just tell me when. Awesome. Awesome, yeah, man. Um, well, dude, I really appreciate your time, Shane. It, it's been really nice talking to you and learning more about Earth Cruiser and the new core stuff. So, uh, Peter, it's been my pleasure. I appreciate your time and, and the interview. It's been great. Yeah, man. Awesome. Thanks so much. And we'll uh, hopefully we'll talk to you here for long. Absolutely. Take care, Peter.